you can sit down, is the feast <coughs> of St. Albert the Great. I'm going to be back here in Toronto because it's been a while since being back here in Toronto. I'm going to be back. And today, a few considerations. The Father and the Son and the Ghost to men. It says in the Gospel today, let your light shine before men. <clears throat> and St. Albert the Great, of course, is famous not so much for himself. Well, he is the father of botany and a great uh, father, one of the great scholastics. But St. Albert the Great fame is that he was the teacher of St. Thomas Aquinas. He was the one that had the privilege to train <clears throat> the greatest mind that God ever sent to the earth, the greatest teacher. And of course, the famous statement of St. Albert the Great, though he was a great saint himself, as that when the little boy Thomas was in his classroom, he was a big boy and he was very quiet, didn't speak much, and so they called him the dumb ox. They said that he was an idiot, not a very intelligent student, the other students, and they used to mock him because of his simplicity and because of the fact that he was always quiet, never had any questions or answers. But he was always thinking. And Albert saw inside of this dumb ox, <coughs> He saw inside that there was something special. And therefore he was angry one time at the class and he said, I say to you that the bellowings of this ox will one day be held, will be heard throughout the entire world. And Albert himself very much appreciated the intelligence of St. Thomas because when he himself was a little boy, he wasn't very intelligent. When he himself was a little boy, he went to school and he couldn't pass the classes. And he wasn't able to pass, and he was, didn't say, I can't be a monk. A Dominicans, Dominicans study all the time. I can't be a monk of the Dominicans. And so he ran away, he climbed over the wall of the monastery. And when he jumped over the wall, he was greeted by the Blessed Virgin Mary. And she said, Albert, where are you going? He said, well, I'm, I can't study. I'm running away. With Albert, go back over the wall and go back to class and I will make it easy for you from now on. But that you might remember that your knowledge comes from God. In the last three years of your life, you're going to go back to being an idiot. And so he did. Climbed back over the wall, and he passed the classes and became such a great stu student that he was a great professor. And he was a professor that taught St. Thomas. And one of the important elements of the life of St. Thomas Aquinas, he was taught by Albert. And Albert did not receive his knowledge from men. Albert was inspired by the Blessed Virgin Mary. And Albert was inspired by heaven. Because when God chose St. Albert not to be a saint for himself, very much like St. Ambrose, who was a great saint, but he was not a saint for himself. Ambrose's great glory was that he was the one who baptized and converted Augustine, though he himself was a great saint. And also Albert's glory is that he is the one who taught in the classroom St. Thomas Aquinas. And God prepared him. He prepared him to be the teacher of Thomas Aquinas. And St. Thomas Aquinas, two great, three great sources of his knowledge. One, he had a saint for a teacher, Albert the Great, who received his knowledge of God, his knowledge of flowers, his knowledge of creation, not only from his teachers, but primarily from heaven. And then also we learn from St. Thomas that he solved the heresies and he they sounded the depths of philosophy and the depths of the universe and the depths of theology and the depths of all truth. He sounded them when he was in front of the tabernacle. It was the tabernacle that taught St. Thomas and it was Albert the Great that taught St. Thomas Albert, through the inspiration of Mary, in the tabernacle, through the inspiration of the son of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and Albert helped prepare this great saint, Thomas Aquinas. And then, of course, Thomas also used his natural intellect, that God gave him a most magnificent intellect, but it was the supernatural grace that made St. Thomas the greatest teacher of all times, and made him the principal answer to all the problems of the world that came after his death in 1274 until the ending of time. He pulled together the synthesis of the whole of creation, 
the synthesis of the whole of Christianity, the synthesis of the whole of the Old and New Testaments, the synthesis of all things into one beautiful Catholic vision, which is the vision we must have in this present crisis. And Albert is the saint who had the privilege to teach the greater saint, Thomas Aquinas. Some saints are prepared by saints, like Augustine prepared by Ambrose, and, 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 and Aquinas prepared by St. Uh, Albert the Great. And also, what is it that we must see in our great fight? We're in a great fight. Who has the answer to the crisis in the world today? Thomas Aquinas, St. Albert the Great, the doctors of the church. And in this Mass of the Doctrine of the Church, what does it say? Let your light shine before men. Let your light shine before men. This is one of the great sins. One of the great sins of the modern Catholic, especially in the last 200, 300 years. Bishop Sheen tells an example in Germany of two Catholic businessmen. Or two businessmen. One was Catholic and the other one Protestant. They had worked together for 20 years. And finally, the Protestant was dying. He tells this in his sermon on, on, on his subject, on the preaching on the subject of confirmation. And finally, the Protestant was dying. So the Catholic came to him and he said, Now that you're dying, don't you think it's time you should make your mind and heart and soul right with God and join the Catholic Church? And the Protestant said to him, If your religion was so unimportant to you during your life, that you never spoke to me about it once. Why should it now become important to me now in my death? Hmm? If your religion was never important to you in your life, why should it be important to me in my death? Therefore he died a Protestant. Now God gave him the grace to be saved, but he was most likely damned. And Our Lady of Good Success speaks about the 20th century. This happened in the 20th century, 1950s, a contemporary event to the life of Bishop Sheen time. And Our Lady of Good Success said, in the 20th century, many, many, many souls will be damned because no one captured them, because no one exposed them to the truth. Imagine that Albert never obeyed the Blessed Virgin Mary and went back to that monastery. He would not have been able to be the teacher of Thomas Aquinas. And there would have been something missing in St. Thomas's teaching, and it would have hurt all of us. But Albert listened to Mary. He went back over that wall, and he taught. The light of faith must shine before men. This is the most serious and most necessary thing. What are we going to do when we carry our faith into the world? It must be visible. It must be known. It must be public. This is what Albert did, what Thomas Aquinas did, what the saints have done in both the Old and New Testaments. When the four crowned martyrs we spoke about last week, they were brothers that were sculptors. And so they went into Rome and they said, look at these vile statues of the gods. Look at these vile statues, pagan statues. We despise them. And they publicly despised the statues. And when they publicly despised the statues of the idols, they were captured and they became martyrs because they publicly despised them. They did not keep it a secret. And there are many cases of the martyrs where they ran to be, to be killed for the faith. This is how Anthony became the greatest teacher of all times, the greatest preacher of all times. Anthony was not able to die a martyr like he wanted to. But Anthony... When he was a young, young man, a newly ordained priest at the age of 24, 25 years old, I think he would just turn 25 or 26 when he preached his first sermon. He was 25 years old, and he saw the first five Franciscan martyrs coming into Lisbon, Portugal. And he said, that's what I want to be. I want to be a martyr. And if I stay in Augustinian, I'll just be stuck in Lisbon, and I won't be able to be a martyr. So he went to the head Franciscan and said, I want to be a Franciscan, but I don't like St. Francis. He was still alive at the time. I don't care about Francis. I want to be a martyr. But I will not become a Franciscan unless you guarantee that I can be killed in the next few years. And he said, no problem, we can arrange it. 
and he joined the Franciscans. He got on a boat to take a short trip from Gibraltar over to Africa. And there was a storm. And he got sick. And the boat landed in Italy. It was like one of our people driving it and went off course. How did the boat get that far off course? A thousand miles off course in a 20 mile trip. And he landed up in Italy and he became the greatest preacher that God ever gave to the church, St. Anthony, called the Saint of the Saints. And St. Anthony was the greatest preacher. How did he become the greatest preacher? Because he wanted to be a martyr. He could not preach if he did not want to die. Thomas could not teach if he did not kneel in front of a tabernacle. He could not understand the heavens. He could not understand the universe if he did not listen to a saint who was inspired by the Blessed Virgin Mary teaching him in the classroom about flowers and about philosophy and about Peter Lombard and the four books of the sentences and the readings of the fathers of the church. When Albert would have spoken to those fathers, he spoke because he loved those fathers because he believed in the word that came from those fathers, because he believed in the great vision. And Thomas was quiet. And Thomas was sucking in and absorbing every word that came from Albert. And he was becoming a saint. And the devil saw that it was a most grave danger, this young boy. And so at the age of 16, through the ministration of his own family, a prostitute was introduced into his room. And he pulled out, would never, it, it was like, like many big guys, he was gentle, he wouldn't hurt a fly, never got angry in his life. But on that day, he went to the fireplace, Thomas Aquinas, he pulled out an iron from the fire, and he went to kill the prostitute. And she ran. And she wisely ran, because he wasn't trying to scare her. He was going to kill her. <laughs> and she ran. And he took that iron iron stick, uh, about from the iron poker from the fireplace, and he branded a cross on the wall, on the door. And from that day forward, the angels came. And he was never tempted in even the smallest way against purity from that day until the day he died at the age of 49. And God inspired him. How could he see so clearly the vision of the stars? How could he understand so clearly all truths? Because he had Albert as his teacher, who was inspired by Mary. Because he had purity of the greatest sort, which is why he's called the doctor of the angels, the angelic doctor, partly because he has the greatest understanding of the angels, since he communed with them, and he explains to us the angels better than any other saint, but primarily is called the angelic doctor because of his angelic purity. Purity that not even the pure had. He was so pure that he saw everything simply, everything clearly. How did Thomas Aquinas achieve the great knowledge and the great wisdom that is passed down to us? Because of the incredible gift of in infinite grace that God poured into him through St. Albert the Great, through the Blessed Virgin Mary, through the Blessed Sacrament, through, the, through the, the, uh, uh, the gift of sacred purity and the presence of the angels, so that when that great saint would die, just before his death, the Lord Jesus Christ would appear to, uh, to Aquinas and say, Thomas, thou hast written well of me, and if I have written well, I need write no more. And he was in the middle of a sentence when our Lord spoke to him. If I have written well, I need write no more. And he set down the pen and never wrote another word. And then he died and went to the kingdom of heaven. We are in a fight right now in which Thomas Aquinas gives us the answer. Albert the Great gives us the answer. And our Lord Jesus Christ gives us the answer. What are we to do? We are to stand up clearly, openly, and boldly against the enemies of God. We are to stand up clearly, openly, and boldly for the sacred truth. We are not yet in the time of persecution. 
We are now here at the time we must sneak from house to house, like they did in England. And we're reading about with the seminarians and the life of John Gerard, going from house to house, secretly going from house to house, because they will be put to death, arrested multiple times. What has happened? The devil is entering into the souls of modern Catholics, and he wants them to be selfish, and he wants them to be safe, and he wants them to be on both sides of the fence, on the side of God, and, as the, and have the devil as a backup, just in case. If I go and blessing those houses in India, in the South Tamil Nadu, I have to walk around the house to look for the face of the devil. And somewhere they put the face of the devil, and somewhere they put a little goat's blood, because they love God, but just in case God gets angry with them, you got to have a backup plan. And so the backup plan is that we're nice to the devil too. God number one, devil number two. So before blessing a house in the villages there in South India, I walk around the house, where's the stupid devil? Give me a rock. And we break open the image of the devil. Wipe off the goat's blood. This house is going to be blessed for God. There's no backup plan. No backup plan. And there's a great temptation for us to have a backup plan when we go into a great fight. The great fight. There cannot be a backup plan. Mm. We must fight with faith. And the real fight isn't what we think it is. We have the picture of the saints walking around with halos. We have the picture of an unreal sanctity. We have the picture of an unreal Christianity. Like a fairy tale. And we do not have the picture of the real world that God created. We must get that picture into our minds. Open our eyes and see that right at this moment, God sustains this hotel. He blesses it. Because of the holy sacrifice of the Mass, it will be offered inside of it. And that there is blessings coming down upon the whole land of Canada because there is a true Mass being celebrated with the faith inside of it. And there are devils that are angry. And they're trying to rip us apart. It will succeed in the case of many souls. But what are we to do? We cannot change direction. We cannot change the battle plan. We must continue openly as we have done from the beginning and as our ancestors have done from the beginning. And we must make the faith open to all. St. Augustine says, there are four types of ground. Only one is good. The other three are bad. But the sower is Christ. He sows on all four grounds. The sower went out to sow seed. What did he do when he was among the rocks? He sowed seed. What did he do when he was amongst the thorns? He sowed seed. What did he do in the midst of the bad ground? He sowed seed. And when he was in the good ground, he also sowed seed. Though few survived in those three types of bad ground, some became saints. Dismas came from the bad ground. There are many shallow saints like Mary of Egypt who began very shallow. She came from the thorny ground. And there are saints that came from every kind of ground. Some from a very bad background. Some from a very weak background. But God can rise up saints amongst the rocks. He himself said it. If these children do not praise me, the very rocks will cry out. And the rocks have cried out. Many times in history the rocks have cried out. Like the bell rock in Tamil Nadu cried out when Lazarus was killed. When Lazarus the saint was killed in Temple Nadu and he fell down from the rocks, the rock came from the top of the mountain and it rang the bell. And the bell was heard of, the, of, the, of that rock for many miles around. And now 400, 300 years later, you could still ring the bell and the rock still cries out. And other rocks have cried out. When God says the rocks will cry out, he is not being spiritual. Our God can make the rocks speak, and he has made the rocks speak. Our God can change the thorns. Our God can change the dirty ground and the bad ground. And he can change the good ground. And he can change all things. But what do we have to do? We have to believe in the power of that God, who is the true God. And the Blessed Virgin Mary is still here with us. Albert is still here with us, the great saint. He knew that God was in charge of the flowers. We must know he's in charge of the flowers. And Albert loved the flowers. Albert loved the 
plants and the trees. Probably when he was a young boy, he wasn't very intelligent, but he knew gardening, knew flowers, and God blessed him with knowledge. He did not lose his love of flowers. He became the first great botanist. He began to analyze those flowers and measure those flowers and define those flowers. Because all were created by God to manifest certain aspects of his beauty and his glory. And in our great fight, let us persevere openly, clearly to the world. And God will send the souls that he wants. If we hide the truth, we will be guilty of the sin that Saint, uh, that our Blessed Virgin Mary said would be so common in our times. That those will walk by carrying the treasure of the truth, but they won't speak it. They'll walk by carrying the treasure of the truth, but they won't communicate it. And therefore, souls will be lost who are waiting to pick up a little bit of truth. And so many souls die because they are not fed a little bit of food. They're not fed a little bit of water. And so they die. We must share with our neighbors the truth that God gave us. This is what we must do. If we have the truth and we love it, how can we keep it inside of ourselves? If we do, it means we love it not. What we love, we communicate. Just ask the boys about the baseball stats. Ask them about the football stats. Ask them about the video games. They have so many wonderful things to say. Because they love these things. But what if we love God? What if we love our faith? What if we love the Blessed Virgin Mary? What if we love the truth? What if we love the order that God created in the spheres? Then we must speak of those things and try to spread the knowledge and love of the beauty of God's faith, the beauty of God's creation, the beauty of God's everything to the whole world because the whole world needs Christ and there is no other answer to the problems of the public schools. There is no other answer to the problems of governments. There is no other answer than, 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 than the answer of Jesus Christ and the Holy Roman Catholic faith in all its beauty and its entirety and we must stand for that faith and openly proclaim it and then God will give us the grace when the time of persecution comes to be able to stand without the protection of Mary, without the protection of Christ, without the protection of the saints, without the protection of the scapular and the rosary, we cannot survive. Let's call upon these great protections and openly proclaim the truth of the holy faith and not hide it in any way. And God will continue to bless us we must go forward, and we cannot change direction. Rosette, God bless you all. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.